Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Politics here at The Hindu with me, Nistula Hebbar, where we unpack the news making the headlines in domestic politics. This week, the Congress huddled down to a Chintan Shivir or an introspection camp in Rajasthan's Udaipur to go into ways to arrest the decline in the party's electoral fortunes with several suggestions for a revival on the anvil. And the BJP prepared to draw up an elaborate two-week-long marking of eight years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi as pra- at, at the helm of affairs in India, including a big rally by Prime Minister Modi himself in pole-bound Himachal at the end of the month, an outreach to Dalit, tribal and minority communities, and a hard sell of the government's various uh, welfare programs. We will, however, be looking at the Supreme Court's orders to keep in abeyance all pending trials, appeals, and proceedings with respect to charges framed under Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code, which basically deal with the offence of sedition till the central government completes its undertaking to re-examine the provision. The whole of last week was actually taken up by the hearing on sedition. Uh, A lot of people were agog. Uh, to know just what uh, CJI uh, N.V. Ramana had in mind when he said that he would be hearing uh, petitions challenging the sedition, uh, the law on sedition uh, that has been in place in India since 1898. Well, what is the sedition law? Let's just start with the very basics here. What is the law on sedition? Well, according to wording, uh, the wordings of section 124A, the definition goes as follows. Whoever by words, either spoken or written, or by signs, or by visible representation, or otherwise, brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt, or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law, shall be punished with imprisonment for life, to which a fine may be added. Well, The section 124A was added to the Indian Penal Code in 1898. This was the time when India was under British rule and the uh, the punishment uh, with regard to this section was uh, transportation for life, which we colloquially in India call Kalapani for a life term. This uh, punishment was amended in 1955 to mean life imprisonment. Basically, the provision was applied Uh, to curb uh, the movement for freedom and independence that had been going on in India and several freedom fighters of the country including Lok Mani Pal Gangadhar Tilak, Mahatma Gandhi and Maulana Abul Kalam Azad had been booked under the law on sedition by the British government, the colonial government of the day. After independence therefore The logical uh, sort of thing to uh, my mind would be that such a law which held a foreign government uh, control Indians uh, and control uh, the political activities of Indians and their ability to express dissent would be removed. But that didn't happen. This uh, law and sedition stayed on the statute books. However, there were a series of legal challenges to uh, the law and sedition which uh, altered somewhat. Uh, how it could be applied, how it could be interpreted. Basically, uh, for example, in 1950, uh, where it was held that the criticism of the government, unless it involved efforts to overthrow the state or undermine security, could not be held as sedition. Then, one of the most important cases uh, on, uh, on this law was the Kedarnath ruling in 1962. In fact, this is the ruling Uh, which the constitution bench currently will have to go into. Here, the five-judge constitution bench said, unless accompanied by an incitement or call for violence, criticism of the government cannot be labelled sedition and restricted the use of the act if it incited uh, public disorder, a phrase not originally present in 124A when the British had applied it. Supreme Court's major legal challenge, therefore, is whether this particular case was correctly decided and whether the statute against sedition may be considered an exception to free speech. Well, uh, now let us come to what happened uh, for the Supreme Court's directions to appear last week. The Supreme Court uh, uh, agreed to hear a bunch of petitions by journalists and Srinamul Congress MP Mahua Mitra, among others, 
as a fresh uh, challenge to the law on sedition. Petitioners argued that the law was being used to shut down protests and dissent against uh, centre and state governments or go after people with inconvenient opinions with regard to governments, again, both state and central governments, rather than uh, speaking against state of India. Basically, they said that whoever had an inconvenient opinion about the government of the day, was critical of the government of the day, was being charged under sedition, whereas uh, uh, criticism of the government should not be considered uh, sedition. Uh, what should be considered sedition possibly could be if there were any utterances or means to undermine the security of India, the Indian state. There was a clear distinction being drawn, obviously, between the government and the state of India. Well, uh, among uh, you know the people who had been uh, booked under sedition lately were student leaders like Disha Ravi, uh, Kanhaya Kumar, uh, to Lok Sabha MP from Maharashtra, Navneet Rana. Uh, they all have been charged. They all have been charged under sedition, and uh, a lot of the momentum on the petition uh, that was moved came from a flurry of these arrests. Uh, those opposed to 124A also cited low conviction rates under the law to make their point. The law was so broadly uh, uh, applied that conviction actually was quite getting quite difficult. According to the National Crime Records Bureau, as many as 356 cases of sedition were registered in the country between the years 2015 to 2020 in which 548 persons were arrested. Only 62 cases went to trial and there were acquittals in 55 of these 62 cases. Only 12 people in 7 cases were convicted during this period. Petitioners also said that the various provisions of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act covered the more serious aspects of prosecute, prosecuting cases where the security of the state was imperiled and that 124A should therefore be read down. Now we come to the twist in the tale which happened on Monday, which is that although the government, the central government had initially defended the provisions of 124A on Monday last week, it filed a three-page affidavit which stated that Prime Minister Narendra Modi believed that outdated colonial laws had no reason to stay on when the country was marking 75 years of India's independence or Azadi Ka Amrit. Mahotsav. This was a, a turn of events uh, which took many by surprise and uh, it was interesting to see the Prime Minister's views being set forth quite forthrightly in this three-page affidavit. The Home Ministry's affidavit stated that the Prime Minister had periodically in various forums expressed his clear and unequivocal views in favour of protection of civil liberties. The affidavit also said that the central government, under an ongoing process, had removed offences and stale laws which were mindless hindrances to the people. Basically, the government said that yes, there is a thinking in the government driven by Prime Minister Narendra Modi that perhaps a law brought in by our former colonial masters uh, need not apply in India, which is a democratic country with a democratically elected government and uh, where dissent should be expressed freely and civil liberties should not be curbed for expressing dis dissent and also said that there were many other colonial era laws which this government had uh, removed uh, since it had come to power. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of a, 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 a data point there. Uh, the Ministry of Law and Justice had informed the Lok Sabha in March this year that so far 1486 obsolete and redundant laws have been repealed by the government of India since 2014. What is the uh, what is the gov uh, Supreme Court's uh, uh, orders on this particular situation, and what does it mean? Basically, the three-judge bench of the Supreme Court, headed by Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana, made it clear that it has suspended 120 Section 124A of the Indian Penal Code in its present form until further orders and persons against whom fresh cases are filed under this law can seek bail citing these orders. Uh, this has been done to give the government some time uh, to uh, not just uh, do a review as it said that it wanted to do in the three-page affidavit. It also said that uh, the government was in favor of doing a review of this uh, law and sedition and come up with uh, uh, what it felt to be the best fit. 
but the court also made it clear that it hopes and expects that the center and state governments restrain themselves in the application of this law while it remains suspended. Uh, what does this mean? It means that whoever uh, the, the 124A uh, has been uh, basically suspended, but if the government uh, does want to book somebody under this section, then uh, uh, people can move for bail, those on, on whom this has been applied. And basically, it's an instruction. It's an instruction to the civil authorities to go gently on civil liberties and the application of this law. The bench, however, did not give a deadline for the reconsideration of the law aware that it may involve a legislative process and the very tricky situation of division of powers between the, judici the judiciary, the legislature and the executive. The, uh, the power to make laws, of course, is with the legislature and uh, to come up with rules, etc. is with the executive. Uh, this is what the court observed. This court is cognizant of security interests and integrity of the state on one hand and civil liberties of citizens on the other. There is a requirement to balance both sets of considerations, which is a difficult exercise. Uh, what does it mean for those held under sedition at the moment? Well, uh, as said earlier, most can move for bail, but in many cases, apart from sedition, uh, cases under UAP and other sections have also been applied in many of the cases where people have been arrested, uh, several journalists and others who have been in jail for many uh, days now. They not only have cases against them under 124A, so, uh, but also the UAPA. So if they give, get bail under this uh, one case of sedition, it's not necessary that they will get bail uh, in the case that they've been booked under UAPA. So uh, they may not uh, still be able to walk free uh, out of jail, etc. For the center, this is not an easy position either. No, While no deadline has been given for the review of 124a the law remains in abeyance in the duration and uh, the government will have the tough task of uh, going into this law uh, trying to find a tweak it can still uh, tweak this law and come up with a modified version of the same or it can ask parliament to it can bring a bill to parliament saying that we strike it down or it can come up with some other rules to modify uh, this particular act which also may have to go through the parliamentary may or may not have to go through the parliamentary process well this is where we are at as far as uh, uh, the case on sedition going on in the supreme court is concerned it was a big big day uh, in india this is a, a law which predates the constitution of india and uh, therefore has uh, not just uh, an importance in terms of civil liberties in this country but also jurisprudence this is all i have for you this week uh, unfortunately, I will not be joining you next week because I'll be on leave. Uh, I hope you have a good weekend uh, and the rest of the week. Thank you for watching.